What is up everyone? Oh my goodness, here's the day. Today is the day I am finally going to talk about the experiment that I've been doing, the results that I got, and let me just say right off the bat, yes, the pros are right. I mean, what would you expect? As a beginner, an intermediate, wherever you are on the art spectrum, you can actually probably create better artwork than you think you can. Unless, of course, you're already doing all of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, if you're already doing all of this, then okay, you, you, you already knew it. You already knew it. Don't worry about it. Um, but for those of you who are beginners, it's true. You, you could be doing better art right now. But but there's, there are some other things you also need to be aware of before you go ahead and take this advice. And let's, let's just be clear here, everyone. I am just a beginner, all right? So take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm just giving you, sharing my experience, and maybe my experience will change later on. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we... I basically want to run through three main things in this video. First of all, of course, what is the experiment? For those of you who are just joining and may not have seen the video where I talked about this experiment that I was going to do, I want to talk about the results I got, the drawings I did, and the things I learned. That's where the, the butt comes in, all right? Uh, there are some things I learned from going through this experience as a beginner and I want to share those as well. So first of all, what was this experiment? Uh, basically, I kept on hearing that one of the main things that separate beginning artists from those who are much better is that it, it really comes to slowing down, planning, making sure you have a strong foundation in how you're setting up your drawing, and being intentional intentional in the strokes that you're putting down and the things that you're doing just overall slowing down and I think for as a beginner I can speak for myself we tend to see a lot of art a lot of good art floating around and with the perceptions with the videos YouTube videos that are all sped up I mean even some of my drawings are sped up right and when you look on different platforms, it just seems like everybody's just popping out great art all the time. <laughs> I mean, like all the time. Until you actually start slowing down and paying attention to it. During this time, I've heard so many professional artists talk about how much time they're actually spending putting in on their artwork in order to get it. Sometimes weeks, months, <laughs> how much preparation goes into their art, uh, most of which we aren't seeing as beginners. And so we get into this habit of, oh, it has to be quick. Uh, it doesn't. Take your time, plan it out, and you will get better results. All right, so that was the experiment. So I wanted to test this out for myself, being a beginner. And so here are a few drawings that I went through um, trying to test this out. So the first thing I did was, of course, before I drew anything, I went in and set up a plan. So I wanted a solid foundation. I wanted to measure everything out, set planes. And, and the measuring that I was using is um, the measure where they kind of hold the pencil out. And I'm, I wasn't doing sight size measurement. This is comparative, so not necessarily trying to get it the same size as the reference image. Um, but doing those comparative measurements, uh, trying to figure out the planes a little bit, building up by levels. This was the skull from the Proco figure drawing course from the Skull app. And first of all, <laughs> I must say after I finished this skull, if you've seen the skulls from my previous video I was reviewing my work, I mean, this one, I, I was really excited about how it turned out. It, it looks cool. <laughs> I mean, all right. So I'm a beginner. I'm just a few months in, not even a year yet. And yeah, I, I, I was really pleased with how this turned out. Um, 
if you see my dates here, I kept track of just, of, just, just the days on this one. So one, two, three, four days, two of them were spent in just trying to set up the layout, just trying to set the lines up, trying to make sure that the nose was positioned somewhat correctly, spent two days on that. Um, yeah. And then pass with the tune and then to the end. In the other drawings, I actually get a little bit more specific and I track uh, my time, the actual time I spent on it. Uh, because even just saying these days don't really give a full picture here. Now, let me, I also included some comments here. And this first one was, was actually key and eye-opening for me. I, I actually caught myself saying to myself, not, not verbally, but in, in my head, I caught myself saying, that's good enough. <laughs> so let me give some context to this. I was, I think I was still in the layout process here and I couldn't get something to line up correctly and I was fidgeting with it and I could just hear myself saying, dude, it's, it's good enough, just move on, <laughs> right? And I think to have better art, you have to push through that feeling. You have to you have to push through it and say no if I can tell that it's wrong in the beginning stages I can't expect that somehow later on it's just gonna fix itself <laughs> it's not gonna fix itself later on if you're hearing that voice nagging at you in the beginning stage to just say hey it, it's okay just leave it it's, it's fine then, eh, you might want to look at that you, you might want to take that into consideration um, and then the first pass of shadow makes me smile a bit on the <laughs> uh, smile a bit on the inside. Uh, yeah, when I put down the first pass off the shadows, uh, that that did actually make me feel pretty good on the inside. So the, I'll <laughs> I, I might try to come back and say something about that later on. But all right, so so this was the first drawing. I was really excited about how it turned out. And so I decided to jump into the second drawing here. So here we go. All right, so this is the second skull drawing that I did. Um, <laughs> whoa. Okay, some similar plans here. Solid foundation, measuring, midterm shadows skull trying to do simplified shapes um, and if I was blown away with the first one I was definitely blown away with the second one as well <laughs> oh oh man I was I was like oh my goodness this is it this is what I've been waiting for just slow down um, yeah and so I, I drew out the skull as well taking time to measure still see some of my setup over here from the very beginning of the lay-in just putting out some some uh, lay-in lines on this one I actually track the amount of time I spent two hours on the line lay-in one and a half hour on shadow detail and mapping so still sort of a lay-in and three and a half hours trying to put in some of the tone and stuff for a total of seven hours. Now, for me, that felt like a lot of time. However, having heard some of the professionals talk about how much time they spend on different things, that's actually not a lot of time. And granted, a professional just doing a skull um, to this level will probably take a lot less time, but I'm just saying I get worn out a lot faster Which again, I will come to in the section where I talk about takeaways, but once again I was pretty excited about how this turned out and So I decided to step it up and because I was doing the portrait course with Proko decided to hop into a few 
portrait studies for for the rest of the experiment uh, because again I was having success here and I to be honest I was a little bit nervous about going into the portraits uh, because it just seemed very difficult I mean but anyway let, let's jump into it and see what happened here so this was the first portrait uh, that I did here. Took a total of nine hours to complete this. Two and a half hours for the lay-in, interestingly. Um, almost as much as the skull, but spent a lot more time putting in the tone, tweaking different things. You can still see some of my lay-in stuff here. I had so many lines that I, I tend to label some of them just to make sure I'm keeping track of everything. Um, yeah, and surprisingly enough, this turned out a lot better than it felt like it was going earlier on. I struggled a little bit with figuring out some of the planes um, of the face and how the light was hitting it because the light was really soft on, on the reference image. Um, one of the things that I realized right away in doing these portrait studies was noticing that the slightest change of the line could make the difference between whether it resembled the reference and whether it didn't. I mean like just the slightest curve of the line or not curve. It, it was really interesting and and so just that attention to detail made a huge deal taking your time making sure you have everything set up um, and hey it, it turned out pretty good and this one I didn't get to fit in all the hair and so I just uh, left that off probably better planning on my part could be done but again was pretty much excited about how this turned out and so for the final portrait I said, okay, let's jump into this and try to do, try to put everything together here. And here we go for the last portrait that I did. This was the last portrait that I did. And wow, I, I was again, really impressed with how this turned out. Compared to the reference, yeah, there were some things that were a little bit shaky, especially in terms of how the nose lined up with the eyes. They were a little bit off as well as the mouth, which I noticed at the end. You will notice here that all the way down here after I had quite a few hours passed, um, <laughs> almost 10 hours in, I noticed that the mouth was off worse than it is now and I struggled with whether I should actually try to fix this and decided to decided to do it the mouth was really close up to the nose it was at a bad angle and it, it just didn't look right I had to erase it drop it lower do it all again tried to get the angle correct still didn't get it quite correct in the end but at the same time, this portrait, I think, turned out really well. Uh, one of the things I thought about in terms of putting this atmosphere here, which they really don't tell you much about, like, why would you darken this side of the face, but not put it like over, like, why, why did I do that? So I, I don't know everything about this yet in terms of how that turns out, but there's something about going from dark to light to dark to light and having that alternating um, interface of dark and light uh, where two things cross that makes things pop more. Okay, I don't know how to explain it yet because I still have to look this up. Um, most of the courses that I've gone through so far, or, or maybe they've said it and I've missed it as a beginner, 
that tends to happen a lot. But one of the things that I did learn on here was this thing talking about contrast hierarchy. And I was actually listening to one of the live streams from Stephen Zapata while I was doing this piece and he talked about the importance of contrast in terms of keeping the contrast to the part that you really want people to pay attention to and make sure that the other areas aren't as contrasty. And interestingly enough, right at that point, I was about to finalize the here and it was actually very contrasty in the here as well. And I just thought about that and it, it, it wasn't, the, the portrait wasn't quite working like I wanted it to. And as he said that it just clicked, there was too much contrast in the here and it was actually attracting attention up to the here. And I just took my blending stump and blended it all down, did a totally different thing with it. Um, and it really draws your attention into the face. Um, and so it, there's also something to be said for listening and taking the advice of professionals like I'm currently doing. But even in the moment, sometimes you know things, but implementing it in the moment, sometimes that's difficult. And just hearing that comment at just the right time really helped me jump in. And I think it made the portrait better again. You're going to hear me say a lot of things that uh, that need to be fixed, but let not don't let that fool you that I'm not super excited in terms of how these set of drawings turned out. Wow. Okay, so here it is. If these turned out so so well, why why is there a but? What did I say but, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, yeah, let's let's just do super slow drawings all the time um, and and always have good drawings right um, so one of the things I did find going through this process and paying attention to my emotional state was there is a pressure that continues to build from picture to picture that picture, that the, the pressure to be perfect, okay? So the next picture has to be perfect as well, or else I'm, I'm failing somehow. And you start to develop this fear, at least I felt it, and probably just because I'm a perfectionist in general. <laughs> like I have a, uh, I already have a video already talking about this problem that I'm trying to escape, right? Um, and there's this kind of fear that develops because of that pressure you're putting on to yourself of the next drawing. And so that's just something you need to be aware of in yourself and be able to push that off a bit. I think lately I've been trying to be very self-aware of how I'm feeling and my self-talk while I'm going through the drawing process. And that's something you need to pay attention to. The other thing I learned was for beginners, speaking about me as well, the lay-in portion, mm, it's tough to get through. It's, it's tougher than you expect because as a beginner, one of the things that helped keep you motivated is seeing things emerge from your drawing and the lay-in process you're working on it for hours and it still doesn't really look like anything much like sometimes you're still not sure if this is gonna work out now having pushed through a few of these I have some idea that hey if I push through it it will be better at the end but again this is something you're gonna need to be aware of that it's going to take a while and so I would say probably you should limit give yourself some time limits on on oh, I, I hate saying give time limits because that that could cause a whole different problem um, I'd say it like this just be aware of your mental state give it a good shot if 
there are things that obviously need to be fixed, just go ahead and fix them because you'll regret it later on. Just fix them. If you can see it already, it's, if it's a problem now, it's going to be a problem later, I guarantee you. Don't, don't leave it alone. Fix it in the beginning. Set it up correctly. Um, and go through the work. Put in some hours. But don't spend too long um, to burn yourself out. Um, here's one more thing that I learned. As a beginner, should you be doing these type of drawings all the time? It depends. Um, it depends on where you are. Uh, personally, I found myself doing a lot of uh, just sight visualization in terms of the comparisons and not necessarily thinking structurally through the drawing and constructing it more 3D. Um, if you're already at the point where you have learned everything that you... Not even everything, you're never going to learn everything. If you've already learned enough and you really need to put some time into implementing the skills that you've learned, you should probably do some of these because it gives you a good idea of where your weaknesses are. And then with that knowledge, I think you should go back and work on those weak points. And that's what I'm going to be doing. So probably you're not going to be doing this all the time, but it'll be an iterative process where you do the longer projects and doing the longer projects help expose to you some of the weaknesses you have in your drawing so that you can get better at it. So you improve those and then come back to long drawings again. I think as a beginner, that's probably the way you want to do it. Not just constantly doing the long uh, projects that may end up burning you out in the process. But again, this is just my experience. If it works for you and you like just doing the projects all the time, go for it. <laughs> but just monitor your own emotions as you're going through it and then you can determine what you need to do. I think my biggest takeaway from doing these experiments was the importance of just being intentional. Whether it's a project that you're doing, whether it's practice that you're doing, being intentional. What is my plan for these set of drawings, this set of practice? What do I hope to get out of it? And making sure that you're not just rushing through it, but you're actually analyzing what you're doing as you put down the lines and don't move on just because well, I've already put down some lines. If something doesn't look right, take the time to fix it. It'll, it'll help you later on, and it will help you even as you reach the end of that specific drawing or that specific project. It will help you understand better. Take your time, don't just throw down lines, and be intentional. And just remember, after all of that, there's need for balance. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm just a beginner, just sharing my experience. Uh, and so I'm gonna be excited to jump in to more learning, more projects here. And I hope you'll join me on this journey. Um, again, I'm just, I'm just so excited about how this turned out and the learnings I gained from going through this experience. And of course, I'm gonna be doing this again no doubt really pleased with how it turned out if you want to follow me on my journey subscribe like the video if you want to encourage me hey let's get through this art journey together i'll see you next time thanks